everybody. Jan and Mike here, Sunsets and Sangria, talking about more about our trip across the United States to Arizona. Our next stop was at the Kansas City East Oak Grove KOA, just to the east. That's why it's Kansas City East. <laughs> art, art. Oh, of Kansas so City awful. in Missouri. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the things about doing this kind of just pushing across the country trip and only staying one night, well, besides the fact that it sucks, um, only staying one night at these places is they all start to blur together. I don't even think we took a picture of the spot that our rig was parked in. We usually try and get a picture. I might have. You didn't send it to me if you did. <laughs> well, if I, if I do have one, I'll send it, and you'll be seeing it right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> or after or we're not. done mat nattering no. at you. So, um, Kansas City East KOA, we were, that was our drive across Missouri. Yes. Talk about yeah. the drive across uh -oh. Missouri. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the main thing that I remember from that was just, it was fighting the wind all the way. The entire trip was 300 or so miles and it was just fighting the wind all the time. All yeah. the time. And so not only fighting to keep the rig on the road this way, but when a truck was coming up behind and pushing at yeah. you, then you had to fight against that. And Yeah, so that was, that was kind of an exhausting drive. because There just, might have been you know, some swear words said. Probably about two or three hundred thousand. <laughs> How many yeah. miles was it? How <laughs> many <laughs> swear words per mile? But, so the KOA, um, it was your standard KOA. Easy access mm. led to the site by, you know, a, a kid in a golf cart. Um, not really any problems hooking up. No, Good level I mean, sites. Nice level, very spacious sites. Yeah. I mean, so the KOA itself was, was you know, yeah. very nice. You know, the reason we stay at KOAs a lot is because we are kind of guaranteed a certain level of... Um, amenities accommodation not that we use the amenities a lot but that the sites are usually fairly decent usually yeah yeah, yeah. it's just it just makes it more convenient what we did do when we stopped there was meet with another friend our friend sue who lives actually on the hi, other sue. side hi sue um who lives on the other side of kansas city and lawrence drove drove across and met us and we went to a um barbecue place called bait yeah, city yeah. barbecue um which serves not surprisingly, barbecue. Kansas oh. City style <laughs> right, barbecue. Right, I have the faintest idea what the differences <clears throat> I don't are. Either. It was very good. It was, it was good. And we again, yeah, yeah. And we got like a mixed platter so we could try yeah. the different types yeah. of meats. And then they cold had sides that were delicious. And again, another great thing is that um, they had had some gluten expert come in and look through their recipes and everything. And their, um, their barbecue yeah. sauces and everything are also gluten free. So, so Bait, um, Bait City Barbecue, Bait City barbecue. Yeah, it is nothing to look at on the outside, but, um, Cat. That's Nina. Nina. Hi. Nina wants to get in on the action. Um, but definitely if you are ever in that area, I highly recommend Bait City yeah, Barbecue. Reason, reasonable prices and very generous portions. Yes, very yeah. generous. We did not go away hungry. No. no. And, oh, and the other thing that I thought was interesting about the KOA, <laughs> and again, we, We've never lived in tornado country, so this is kind of kind of entertaining for us. Was the signs that were up saying that the restrooms were the designated yeah, storm shelters? Right. So that was that was kind of that was kind of interesting. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. Power to you, folks. All right, <laughs> on to another stop tomorrow. Next day, after a drive across Kansas, um, excuse me, we stopped at the Wakini KOA. Now, Kansas, we had been told, let's see, Missouri was the Ozarks. Kansas, we had been told to look for the Flint Hills. The Flint Hills, yeah. Um, which um, there was a sign that told us when we were in the Flint Hills. I think we missed them. <laughs> we, we, there were hills. <laughs> In, interspersed amongst the plains. <laughs> you know, the great thing about this trip, let me intersperse this here, because there really isn't much to talk about when you talk about the Wakini KOA. It was just another one of these 
flat KOAs good, good right, stop, right, right off stop. of the highway. What were we on 70 or 40? What I, road were I we on? I think that was still 70. Yeah, yeah. 70. So just right off of 70, you, you a road parallel 70, mm. it's dead ends into the KOA, and it's just a flat. Yep. Just a just a quick a good, overnight good, stop. Good overnight stop. But yeah. what I was going to say, the really neat thing that I found about this trip is all the different types of country mm -hmm. that we travel yeah. through. So we start here in Maryland in the title, not that Maryland or not that Odenton is actually on the water, but yeah, the title eastern forests you know lands uh, of low of maryland yeah. so we're we're closer to sea level here <clears throat> travel through the appalachians through western mm. maryland maryland through west virginia through southwestern pennsylvania through eastern oh, ohio the, hill, the old hilly country and then we get into the farmlands of of western ohio and illinois and indiana it really, Kansas, really is amazing it is amazing and you know i love normal. seeing the um, wind turbine farms mm -hmm. i think that's yep. really cool yep. seeing the solar power farms that are out there mm -hmm. renewable just, energy yeah yes. go for it we <clears throat> discovered in kansas um there were fields of something growing that neither of us oh, had ever right. seen before. <laughs> I was like, what is so that? luckily it had a fairly distinctive look to this crop. And I searched in the Google machine. <laughs> <laughs> the interwebs. In the interwebs. <laughs> major crop grown in Kansas. And it was sorghum. Mm -hmm. I've never seen sorghum growing yeah. before. Yeah. yeah, very interesting and looking crop. It was very interesting. Yeah. And a late, yeah. late, late season. Late season, yeah, crop, harvest, so, yeah. yeah. So that was cool across the, so the, the plains of the Midwest, the high plains mm -hmm. as we're going into Colorado, and little, then of course bit of the, Rockies. The, Rockies, the Rockies. So the the you know the big mountains mm -hmm. down into Taos. We had the high desert. We had the desert. I mean, pine forests and aspen. We yeah. saw. I mean, this this is an amazing country. And all that to say is that there much isn't much to see in Wakini. <laughs> so again, great overnight Sorry, stop. Sorry, Wakini. <laughs> Keep on going. Sorry, folks, but. <laughs> There you, know, you have it. There you have it. Unless, you, unless you're visiting family or, or whatever. <laughs> oh, we ha we're having another cat quake yes. now. Um, cat number two no, has stop. decided no. to visit. Okay, so. day oh well that's that's where everything went wrong that's right okay oh yes okay the next day so i don't remember how long of a drive if that was as long from wakini to I, lyman so now we're yeah. entering colorado lyman colorado or lehman, lehman. colorado we be lyman we be lyman <laughs> but that's only if we're in trinidad <laughs> or if you just have enough booze so we, we had room all right well yeah, I don't okay. think we had enough. Oh. So again, the, that this KOA is another just right off of 70, um, flat, open space, easy to get to. Yeah, good, um, good stopping place. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, the KOA and, and the folks at the front desk made sure to mention this, so it's not, this is not on them. Um, make sure if you stop at the Lyman Lehman KOA that you have a proper pressure water pressure regulator for your water line. Um, now I'm going to tell you I'll I'll intersperse pictures if we if we can find them of what a a one of these little thingies is a flow regulator. They're marketed as we'll put a picture in here as a <laughs> picture here. <laughs> <laughs> as as um as water as pressure regulators they are not they are flow regulators um a pressure regulator will actually have a gauge on it and it's a much bigger gadget that you stick on the water line this is very important because whenever um i mean they, they said that their pressure was high okay now pressure for rv lines is typically no more than 45 to 55 psi so otherwise you start spraying leaks everywhere which of course you don't want so i had my handy flow regulator which i didn't realize was not a pressure regulator and you know as i always do and stuck that on there well the overpressure uh, or the overflow um valve from the hot water tank hot water tank started leaking 
um, a fitting under the sink started leaking. And that's when things started going downhill. Because now it was getting cold, it was getting dark. It the, was windy. <laughs> it was very windy. And the the water heater stopped working. So <laughs> so Jan had to shuffle off to the <laughs> to the shower. And it's not like <laughs> I have a, a lot of <laughs> hassle with going to the bathhouse we don't usually it have was really to cold it was but windy. by the time he's he's monkeying with this monkeying with this will this Trying work will that work will this work will that work it had gotten dark it had dropped from probably i don't know whether it got up into the 60s that day but as it got dark it dropped down into the 40s and quickly into the 30s and with the rain with the wind um so i just like I'm out of here. I have got to get over there and back before it gets any colder. So, so while she while she's off getting a shower, so the water heater is already up, you know, not refusing to work now. Um, and I'd, I'd figure out the pressure problem, but that didn't, you know, seem to make it any happier. Well, then I went to turn on the furnace, and there was this loud bang, um, and the furnace stopped working. So now normally we don't use the furnace much, the propane furnace, because we use electric space heaters, which are which and an electric blanket do the, do the trick. and something called a rug buddy that we'll have to talk to you about at some time, at some point. So anyway, so both the water heater and the furnace were now in the fritz, and we're like, oh, crap. So, and I turned the water off, and just we were just using the water out of the tank um, with the water pump because I, I knew that was a problem because that's why the the overflow valve on the hot water heater was leaking. And, and there was a leak now going under the sink that we didn't know about yet. Um, so anyway, that was that was uh, an interesting evening. And the following morning, <laughs> campground etiquette. Campground <laughs> etiquette. So I had been in and out of the rig like at least a dozen times, you know, taking panels off, whatever, trying to fix these problems, you know, that night. So in the course of all that, I had forgotten and left the, the porch light on. So I'm out getting getting the rig ready to to break camp in the morning, and the gentleman next to us is doing the same. This uh, older gentleman, and he he uh, walks around. And he goes, "Hey, thanks for leaving your porch light on all night." And then you know zips around the other side of his rig, and it's like, dude. <laughs> Number one, don't you have blinds? I don't mean, you usually pull your blinds down at night? But you know, don't assume that the person next to you, if they do something like that, is is doing it just to annoy you. Uh, you know, maybe they were tired or exhausted and just left to, it on yeah, by accident. Yeah, come and knock and say, hey. And if it's bothering you, just know you say, Could you turn, say, hey. you know, your light's kind of bright. You know your lights on? Yeah. yeah. What <laughs> makes that doubly <laughs> funny is that we've been yelled at by his mother about leaving the oh. porch light on. <laughs> now for her, I'll leave it on on purpose. Yeah. But <laughs> it's just for you, Anne. We love you. <laughs> so anyway, don't be mean. Don't be mean. Don't be mean. Okay, anyway, so that was Lehman. Moving on. After Lehman, Lyman. and I do have some pictures of driving out of Lyman and driving across Colorado, so mm. onward and upward. Mm -hmm. one, one thing that I think it was somebody on the 50s and over RV group on Facebook said, you know, as you're driving across Colo Colorado, as you're driving west, you start looking. You start looking out at that horizon. Oh, yeah. Looking <laughs> for those mountains. mountains. Are. And pretty soon you see a smudge and you think, is that clouds or is that the Rockies? And pretty soon you start seeing the Rockies. And I love that. Yeah, it's I cool. It's love cool. It's Rockies. Cool. Coming to the gorgeous, Rockies gorgeous awesome. part of the country. Yeah. Some places uh, that we that we definitely want to spend a lot more time yeah. when, uh, when we yeah. get a chance. Number one of the number one places. Yep. So, next stop. House. Thank you.